He shed his blood at least three times that I'll mention. The first was in the garden when he sweat drops of blood because of the anguish and the pressure and the mental, uh, emotional pressure that was going on. And he started sweating. Think about that. So intense. He sweat drops of blood. That was the first time he, sweat, he shed blood. The next time was at the whipping post when he was whipped and beaten. And then the final time was at the cross. Now, we know that the cross was for our sins and we can be forgiven. And not just forgiven, but cleansed. We can be made whole, made different. We can be different people. We know that by his stripes, you were healed. He didn't have to heal you. You were healed. It's already legal for you to be free. What that means is, I'll just go ahead and throw this in. That means that you don't have to wait for my hands or anybody else's. That means what he did is already on the books as the law in the kingdom of God. So at any point, whatever you couldn't do, you can start doing. At any point, you can just, if you couldn't breathe, you can take a deep breath. If maybe you couldn't see out of one eye or both eyes, you can just cover the oven and you can see. Whatever it is you couldn't do. Why? Because what am I doing right now? I'm proclaiming deliverance to the captives. Yes. Why? Because that is captivity. Whatever is going on in your body in that sense, it is a captivity. And very honestly, when one person in a family is, I don't want to say severely necessarily, but when there is something going on that limits that person, the entire family is in bondage. Because you have to plan differently. You have to think differently. I know my first daughter was born with a hemangioma tumor and had a tracheotomy in her throat. And we had to have a suction and oxygen. And we had, we had to plan. You know, it wasn't just, well, we're going to run down to the Walmart. We had to plan. We had to make sure we had the machine that would go that would, because she could start to suffocate. And we had to suction out the trach or she could actually die because she couldn't breathe through her, through her mouth or through her nose. And so we had all that going on. And so everything was a big deal. We had to load this stuff up, load her up, make the... So we were, we were all in bondage. She was in bondage most, but we were all there. <clears throat> but Jesus bore that by his stripes. Now, but now we go backwards into the garden where Jesus first shed blood. Well, we know about our sins being forgiven. Most of us even know that by his stripes we were healed. But we forget sometimes that that, that not the crown of thorns, that came later, but he sweat drops of blood in the garden. Why? Because the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Right. He had that mental anguish so we don't have to. So we can have his peace. So we don't have to fear anymore. Why? Because when you understand his love, it cast out fear. When you realize how much he loves you, what all he would go through for you, what all he went through for you, what all he has provided for you, when you understand he does all that because he not only has love, he is love. And when you understand that, you realize, well, of course he'd heal me. Of course he would give me his peace. Of course I don't have to fear. And it cast out fear. Yes. And you don't have to live in fear anymore of anything. You can live free. And when you're free from fear and from the bondage of fear, the Bible says, then you can live in a way that is totally different than ever before. Because let me tell you, if you haven't experienced it, especially recently, it's good to be free. Amen. There is no other feeling like it. When you know that you're clean, when you know your mind is at peace, and whenever you know that he bore all of that so you don't have to. And you know that you are so clean that you can stand before God without any condemnation or inferiority or any of that because he is accepting and loving of you. When you can stand, when, you're, when you know that you are so clean that you can stand before man, when you can stand before Satan and know He's got nothing in you. 
He's got no hooks. People say, well, that, that's not me. He's got hooks in me. I've got an addiction. I've got a fear. I've got a phobia. I can't do this. I can't. And it, listen, whatever he starts with, you know, it's the old saying, you give a mouse a cookie, he's going to want a glass of milk. <laughs> and that's what the enemy does. That's what, the, what Satan does. You give him an inch, he'll take the inch, and then he'll take another inch too. And he'll keep going more. And whatever he gets his hooks in, he gets them deeper and deeper and deeper. The more you obey him, the deeper they get. And pretty soon, right now, you just can't do this thing. But pretty soon, guess what? You'll be in a place where you can't do anything. He'll put you in, a, in, in your, your realm of life will get smaller and smaller and smaller. And he's trying to separate you. He will try to give you ideas, crazy ideas, things you would never think of normally. But he'll give you ideas and make you think they're somehow reasonable. This will never end. It'll never stop. Why not just end it? Go ahead. Just, you know, uh, you believe in God. You know, you'll go to heaven. Just kill yourself. See, he always brings that kind of stuff. And so there are people probably here tonight, I'm assuming, because on the way, actually, when we were up in Gettysburg and the next stop on the way back home was here. And so I just started talking to God about these meetings. And all of a sudden, it's bam, bam, bam. Make sure you hit this. Make sure you hit this. Make sure you hit this. Now, that isn't the only thing. Because the funny thing was, he didn't mention anything about physical healing. And I kind of questioned him about it. Why didn't you mention that? He said, you're going to do that anyway. <laughs> so... I think he knows me pretty well. <laughs> but I'm here to tell you tonight, I don't care where, I don't, I don't care what, I don't care where, I don't care what the devil has done, I don't care where he's had, had you bound, I don't care how many times you tried to be free in the past, tonight's a new night. Amen. Amen. Amen.